So it took me a minute to find a spot to record. The spots that I found previously were all kind of taken or one one guy had uh drove straight up to the that like sitting area so there's just no room to really record there so i'm back to recording in uh in my truck at the moment um and i know for the new people to the channel this might seem kind of weird you know or like random these things that i talk about but it, the the reason why i named the channel after myself, Burrell, Burrell is my last name, is because like this, I don't want people to think that this is a gaming channel because it's not. It's just, you know, my YouTube channel and the things that I, I like to do. So playing Naruto just so happened to be one of those things, but I also like to do other things or talk about, you know, different things. Um, and so you might see like different topics here and there especially me talking about the bible or different things that might be going on in my life or things that i come across in the world um that i probably will talk about for example lately i've been seeing this almost picture being painted that god and science are enemies and i think that this is a plot by the devil to try to make it seem like Christians or believers um, shouldn't be logical or work with reason or, um, or like believers or Christians or people of faith are so against um, evidence or so against uh, research or, you know, or, or like we're just so against science. We're so against facts. And I don't, and I, I don't believe God and God and science are enemies. I believe that science honors God. I personally think science worships God. I think it it adores God. And this is, um, what I mean by that. For example, some people will say that. When they explain certain things in the Bible and they look at it from a scientific point of view and they start to crunch the numbers and the numbers are adding, adding up or whatever that might be. Um, and they come to the conclusion, well, the Bible said that God did this and that. But according to science or according to the numbers, uh, it's impossible. One example of this is um, the historical account of um when god drowned pharaoh's army when it was chasing after moses you know moses put his staff in the red sea the red sea separated so the israelites could walk on dry land once israel passed uh pharaoh and his army chased after moses and the israelites and then the water receded and it drowned pharaoh's army so when they look back at the water levels at that time um, by whatever means that they use because I have no idea they come to the conclusion they meaning uh, being researchers or whoever studies that time period or whatever like I mean I don't know but they say that the water levels at that time were probably three feet and they said that it's impossible to that three feet of water or you know would three, three feet deep deep water would have been enough to drown pharaoh and to drown pharaoh's army they said that it's just not it's not possible so because it's impossible it means according to them it didn't happen and because it's impossible and we and christians or you know we believe that God said, you know, this is how it's written that, you know, this is how it occurred. This is how it happened, that this is how it happened. And so now there's this picture being painted, painted that this conflict between what God says and what science reveals or what's written in the Bible and what science tells us or what research tells us, which, by the way, 
even when we look at that, the evidence um, doesn't always conflict. And most of the time, the evidence backs what was written. In any case, I'm not offended by the impossible. I'm not. So when science tells me that it's impo it was impossible for a three foot of water to drown Pharaoh's army, I'm not offended by that. To me, those numbers add up. If you're telling me that God is saying that he did that he did something impossible, that makes sense to me. <laughs> those numbers, those numbers, they add up. Because we're talking about God. We're not talking about another human being. So when science tries to explain something or when science tries to break something down, you know, try to analyze something that God has done, and then they come to, to the conclusion what he did is impossible. I'm not offended by that. To me, to me, that just makes it even more awesome. Because I know God is capable. God is capable of doing the impossible. God is capable of taking three feet of water <laughs> and drowning an army. He's capable of doing that. He's God. So I'm not offended by that. To me, that just makes the event all the more miraculous, all the more awesome. And, you know, it, it's the same um, just in general. There's many things in the world that we don't, we can't explain fully or we don't understand fully. Um, and it doesn't mean that that thing doesn't exist because we don't fully comprehend it or know why it happened or how it happened. Um, and again, I'm not offended by the impossible. Same thing with the story of Jonah, which that's probably be another topic for another day. But, um, and this is coming, and, and honestly, a lot of believers say, um, dismiss uh, the book of Jonah because they say that it's a, a, a fairy tale because it's not possible for a man to be, you know, swallowed by a fish um, and survive for three days. Um, it, it's just not, it's not possible. And again, I'm, I'm not offended by that. I'm not offended by the impossible. Because when we bring God into the into the equation, the numbers make sense. Because God is able to do the impossible. Same thing with salvation. Salvation is impossible. Right? It's impossible for you to save yourself. You cannot stand before God with any merit on your own. Saying, Lord, I deserve to, to be in heaven or... You know, I just I I am right before you because I did X, Y, and Z. It's not how that works. Because human beings are imperfect. They do wrong. They don't do what they're supposed to do. They make poor choices. They hurt each other. They hurt themselves. They hurt the things around them. They're very destructive. You know. So we can't stand before a guy any merit. On, uh, based on any merit that we have we cannot save ourselves but salvation becomes possible when God enters the equation right Jesus the son of God who is God when we bring him into the equation and we think about him dying on the cross for our sins the blood that he shed which covers all of our unrighteousness. It washes us clean. We have new life in him, right? Now, salvation is possible. God has done the impossible, you know? So I'm, I'm not offended by that. So again, so in, in that regards, I, I don't see a conflict there. I don't believe that science and God are enemies. Here's another example. On the like on the sorta of on the flip side of that. A lot of times when people look at the Bible, they misunderstand it. 
they forget that we're looking at an Eastern book. And when we bring our Western mentality to it, a lot of times we mess up the interpretation of it. So some things we take too literally, some things we look at it and we take no effort to study um, what kind of literature it is, you know, what is the genre or um, uh, who was the audience or who was the author, what was going on in that time period, you know, what is like what is the background inf information here what's what's happening here during the time period why was the author writing who was the author writing to what was the message for that day before we then try to apply it to our day so when we just read our western mentality and our western thinking and our western culture into an eastern book a lot of times interpretation can be messed up. And so then we leave with the wrong interpretation and we go on believing something that's not true that the Bible didn't say, but we don't know it because we didn't study, you know? Or we, because we our, our line of thinking was, was just off. An example of this is a lot of times the Bible speaks in the language of description. So one um, hermeneutics professor said that in those ancient times or biblical times, people believed that water, that land floated on water, right? Like the earth floated on water or that the land or that land floated on water. And that they would leave this because when they would dig down deep enough, eventually they would hit water and they would, you know, create a well or whatever. So they believe that land floated on water, right? It's, it, but it's, you know, this language of description. So, but, you know, in contrast to today, when we have like, science coming to the equation and um, we understand things a little bit more we don't speak in like this language of description right but back then they were just describing what they were seeing or what they were experiencing so for example we say the sun rises and the sun sets but the sun does not rise and the sun doesn't set right not i mean that that isn't I mean that it, it doesn't but to us right we're that's just a language of description when we look at the sun it rises you know and then it goes down but that's not what's happening the earth is rotating it's orbiting around the sun but the sun doesn't rise and the sun doesn't set but we're just using the language of description so um it just it, sometimes looking at certain things in the Bible, uh, you just gotta give some effort and to study, to try to understand what's, what's going on, what's, what's happening. Um, yeah, you know? And also, you know, I, I don't think that we should, uh, believers, Christians, you know, we shouldn't be afraid of questions or um, when the Bible is challenged, you know, when, when God is challenged. I mean, God, God has, ha, has been, people have constantly been challenging God since the beginning of time. You know, I mean, pe people have always been questioning God and asking God, asking God, why this, why that, you know? Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Why do you let this happen? Why do you let that happen? You know, pe people have always been like that. Um, and God has always been patient with people. So, um, you know, there, there's no need to be afraid of questions. There's no need to be offended by things. Um, there's some things, yeah, be offended by, you know, but um, but, uh, you know, science, science, 
science and God, they're not enemies. Um, if anything, you know, I encourage you all to continue to use logic, continue to use reason, continue to look at the evidence. And I believe that evidence evidence points to that God exists. I think that when we look at the world and we look at how the world was designed, um, I think it, it points to that we have, that, you know, God exists. I don't think all this came into being by coincidence, but I think that there was something behind it that designed it, that drew up a blueprint. And I believe the world is evidence of that. I believe all the things you see out in space is evidence of that. I think you and I, I think we are evidence of that. At the very least, I think that everyone should agree that there is a God. I think that people who believe that there that there's no God at all, I don't think that makes that that makes no sense to me. Especially not when you're surrounded by so much evidence that there is a God. Now, of course, I'll persuade you to go a little bit further. That not only does God exist, but that God wants to have a close relationship with his creation. And in order to do that, he had to send his son, Jesus, to die on a cross so that you could, so that the, the broken relationship could be restored. And that man, humankind and God could want to be close again. And all that's made possible through God's son, who is Jesus. So I think my, my life is evidence um, that God exists and that Jesus died on the cross for my sin and the, the Holy Spirit is real because I don't I, I don't talk how I used to talk or act how I used to act I live with I live I live differently now I think differently now than how I used to and that's not to say that like I'm perfect you know I mean it's an ongoing journey you know constantly growing and maturing. But my, my heart has changed. My way of thinking has changed. You know. I no longer stand. Stand. On my own. Or like stand on. What I can do. Or how good I can be. Or. How strong I can be. But. I surrendered all that to God. I'm free. I'm liberated. I stand on Christ alone. You know, my 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 changed life is evidence of the Holy Spirit, of the power of the Holy Spirit. There were some other things that came to mind that I wanted to talk about, but I don't know. I might not. I wanted to talk about maybe repentance a little bit, like the meaning of repentance. Um, but that might be for another video. I don't know. 
It's already 20 minutes long. I know I've been pausing a lot. But the sun's going down. It's getting late. So I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling kind of chill right now. So I'm just, I don't know. I'm just chilling. So I guess why not? So I guess we can talk about repentance. Well, one of the things that was on my mind this week is just um, like when I was back at my apartment. Repentance means you're turning away from and you're turning to something. A good example of this is when you change your mind. So let's say you decided that you want to go out and get a cheeseburger. And then halfway there, you change your mind. You're like, nah, I think I want to get this instead. And then you turn around and you start heading towards whatever you decide to get differently. And that's repentance. Repentance is a change in, a change in mind, right? A change in your thinking and a change in your heart. So changing your heart means like a change in action. Right, so you're turning away from and going towards to. It's a it's a change in direction. So to repent is not only confession, but it's a I'm turning away from the old life and now I'm turning and now I'm turning to this new life. So that new life would be what you have in Christ, right? So that's why sometimes the Bible gives that example of when Jesus died on the cross, if we put our faith and our trust in him, right? When he died, when he was buried, it's symbolic, right? If he took on our sins, then symbolically it paints a picture of you, that old sinful life, died with Christ when he died on the cross. And then Christ rose again, right? It's symbolic. If your faith, your trust is in Christ and you accepted him and you accepted his sacrifice, then you are raised by God. You are raised to new life. So the old life is dead. Right. And now you've been raised to new life. And so repentance should show that repentance should show that you have turned away from. And now you're toward what going toward God. There's a change in direction. Which is good to know. Because what this means is anything that leads you away from. God is of the devil because Satan wants to get you away from God. That was a whole, that's, that was one of his motivations in the, the garden of Eden and tricking Adam and Eve. And, and what did sin do? Sin caused a separation between God and Adam and Eve, between God and humankind. Sin caused a separation. Sin caused them to turn away from God and head in their own direction. So anything in this life, anything in your life that may be causing you to turn away from God and you will know what that is because I don't know. It could be anything or it could be nothing at all. But I'm just saying it's, it's something to keep in mind. You know, if it's if something is 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 Godward is toward God, leading you towards God, then it's good. Because the last thing the devil wants to do is to lead you to God. He does not want you close to God at all, but he wants you by yourself. He wants you isolated. He wants you alone. You know, so that way he can attack you. That way he can, you know, impress all of his 
thinking and ways and ideas and plots and everything on you. So it is something to think in, to think. It is something to keep in mind. I don't know when we're gonna do another one of these videos. It just all depends. I don't even know if uh, you guys are even watching the whole thing, which honestly, if you're not, understandable. Um, I know I'm not the most entertaining person or uh, I don't really show probably, I don't display information in a very entertaining way. Um, but how I get it is how I give it. So I hope that counts for something and uh, hope y'all get something out of it to help you in your your daily walk, to help you in your journey because we must endure until the end. The days will be hard, the days will be harsh, but we must endure until the end. So. 